Hi, my name is Bob Dunhouse. I'm coming to you from the Tianma booth here at SID 2023. Uh, first display I'd like to show you is a micro LED transparent display. So uh, this is in your new display area? That's correct, the new technology display area. And how's the performance? Uh, transmissivity is very good. It's it's 70% uh, transmissive with a low reflection ratio of about 10%. All right, so this is going to be in all the future self-driving cars on the windows and everything? Uh, that's one potential. Yes, one potential. Anywhere where there's glass, I believe that, you know, it, it could be applicable. In every home? Could every be. Every window? Yeah, I mean, there's there's many ways to uh, to implement it. This is this, a micro LED? Yeah, this is another micro LED display, uh, very similar to the one we just looked at. However, it has a, it has a regular liquid crystal uh, display um, laminated to the back of it. And what we're able to do is control the, the transparency of the display, actively control the transparency of the display. So it can vary at anywhere from one-tenth of a percent transmissive all the way up to 24%. And does this demo show the, all the modes? Uh, it does. We'll have to uh, actively switch them. Let's see, I don't know. This right. is not the uh, image to look at. All right, then it goes through transparent mode also. Yes. So here, you see how it, it darkened? Now, so we're at one tenth of a percent transparency. And, and now I'll lighten it. Now you can see inside. Now we're at 24% transparency. Nice. Yeah. Is it uh, some kind of a electro fluidic No, actually glass? It, it is a, it's a standard liquid crystal display that's laminated to the back of a micro LED display. All right. Cool. No color filter on that particular yeah. back plane. Though. Yeah. So it's been a busy display week? It's been very busy, actually, and uh, very popular. This, now we're in the, uh, also in the new technology area, and this is flexible, active matrix OLED displays. The display that you're looking at currently is what we call a trifold or a Z-fold, and it's exhibiting both an inner and outer fold. The idea behind that would be a foldable tablet, as an example. The display you're looking at currently is a 6.67 inch interfold display. We can do an interfold radius of about uh, 2 millimeters. All right. And is it, um, is your audio foldable displays mass production? The, shipping? Yeah, they, they aren't. Uh, again, this is the new technology area, so they're, they're demonstration. So it's for soon? That technology is out there now. All right. Yes, yes. All right. You want to move over? This is the consumer yeah. space. And this is an, uh, two OLED displays side by side. As you can see, they're equal in, in image quality. The difference is, is this uses our CFOT technology, our color film on the TFT layer. Um, what that enables us to do is remove the outer polarizer. When doing so, that, that uh, we're able to reduce the power consumption roughly 30%. Makes it more power efficient. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. It is. It is. All right. Uh, the next is a 6.81, um, um, uh, what they call it, a quad curved display, and that means that all of the edges are actually curved. So this could help to have a bezel-less kind of it's, it's design? It's aesthetics, basically, aesthetics. aesthetics. This is um, um, a 6.497 inch we call privacy display. So the display on the display on the left is your normal display in LTPS, and this is the privacy switching feature. So if you look off angle, you see I can change. You can change the privacy Privacy, level? yes, that's correct. So we limit the horizontal viewing angle. All right. 
This is a, uh, this is a touch embedded display. It actually has an active pen uh, sensor uh, embedded in the, uh, the uh, glass assembly itself. This is just a demonstration of a fast refresh display. This usage would be for like handheld gaming where they need you know, immediate response in, in displays. It's demonstrating 60 versus 180 hertz. Nice. Mm -hmm. This is a, a low temperature polysilicon displays, but you're always looking to get the, the thinnest border you possibly can. This is just demonstrating the reduction in the down border, uh, roughly a reduction of about a half a millimeter. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the consumer space. This is a 13.3 inch, it's a, a 2.8K, fast frame rate, 120 hertz, uh, touch embedded display, so it's not, a, it's not an add-on PCAP sensor, it's actually embedded in the TFT cell itself. Uh, tablet would be a typical application. So, it's not capacitive? The, the touch function. It's PCAP. It is PCAP. Yeah, PCAP. projected capacitive. Yeah, but it's it's in cell, not on cell. So it makes it thinner. This is a very fast frame rate uh, demonstration. Uh, very high um, uh, frame rate, 480 hertz. So typically, liquid crystal displays refresh at a 60 hertz rate. This is 480 hertz. And again, we're in a consumer space. This is a 16 inch, it's high resolution 3K by 2K. It uses a mini LED backplane for high dynamic contrast. And it has uh, 2000 dimming zones in the back. This is a 1.5 inch flexible AM OLED display on a flexible substrate. And that would be uh, used for complex shapes. This is a free form, it's round. Um, Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what are we checking next? Well, why don't we go over to the uh, medical diagnostic monitors. Then. All right. So with these two displays, Tiema has always been very, um, very involved in the medical space, especially for medical diagnostic imaging. The display you're looking at right here is a 30.9 inch 12 meg color display. And in reference to that, I wanna show the panel to the right, which is a 21.3 five meg color. Now we're only showing black and white here, but it is a true color display. This is normally used, this is a standard in the uh, medical imaging, uh, x-ray uh, um, uh, diagnostic field. But if you notice this particular size, which is a standard, uh, typically, you would have a radiologist that would have two of these side by side. The problem is, is because there's two different panels side by side, is they could be slightly different in color temperature, in color reproduction, and that's very critical in, in imaging like this. Therefore, if you, if you follow this and you take this over, you will notice that this single panel is actually two of the displays. Now what that does is that it makes sure that, that the color performance from two A-B comparison um, displays is equal. This is also a 10-bit driver, so color res resolution is very, very uh, finite. And it uses a uh, photo alignment to make sure that black levels and uniformity across the entire surface are very uniform. When you have the, uh, the perfect solution there, uh, then you have three or four million doctors in the world, physicians, uh, what's it called, surgeons, yeah. they'll want to have it. Yeah, I mean, I think um, the, the whole, the whole x-ray imaging world is transitioned from film base to digital base for, for lots of reasons. You know, storage capacity would be one. Um, the next is uh, another one of our strengths, which is um, applications in the marine market. This particular display is a 20.8 inch. It's a 4K by 2K in resolution. It's a very, very bright display at 1400 nits. So in the marine environment, it's very important to select uh, the materials that you use. So we use 
we use outer polarizers and liquid crystal material that can withstand high UV exposure. Because uh, typically if you use just standard polarizers, they would, they would weather, they would yellow over time. So this particular display is ruggedized for the marine environment. Next display is, we call this our invisible technology. And, and we're developing, this is a film-based um, pattern on the outside. We're developing these four films, silver all the way up to red oak. And really what it allows it to do, this is more for aesthetics of design. So if you can turn off the display, the display disappears. So there could be some um, aesthetic designs that they, you don't want to see that there's a display available until you, until you actually want to use it. Nice. Yeah. So you can see here, it disappears, but yet there's still a touch function. Nice. Mm -hmm. It makes it uh, attractive for people to go and touch and play with devices and smart home controls yeah. and everything. Yeah, it's an, it's an aesthetic design consideration. And they are thinking about that in the automotive space, which we'll get to in a bit. Another, another one of our, our uh, strengths is in, in the industrial space is high shock and vibe displays. This particular freeform display, circular display, is capable of withstanding 10 G's of shock, which is very, very high shock. That can be used in things like tractors, uh, earth movers, uh, any place where you have real high shock and vibration environment. The next three displays are, again, we're in the industrial space. These are typically more um, um, custom made products. Each one of them has what we call our TED technology, which is touch embedded display. That means the PCAP sensor itself, the touch sensor itself, is embedded in the TFT cell. It allows it to be very, very thin. Same is true here. And a little bit larger in size, same is true here. This is our latest generation of wet and glove technology. And uh, those that are familiar with uh, PCAP sensing know that for outdoor use where there's exposure to water, false touch becomes an issue. Uh, this, this is demonstrating that the touch functions are working properly, even with water dropping on it. You see we men are lots of water drops on here, but everything is functioning correctly. Works with gloves too. This just demonstrates our ability for PCAP integration. This is a very large 27 inch full HD display. Uh, it has an external PCAP sensor, as you can see here. So Tianwei is capable of doing a 30 inch PCAP sensor on a very large display up to 30 inch. And soon we'll be able to go to 32 inches. Uh, we also do the custom cover glass you see there. All of this is direct bonded at our factory, OCR bonding, wet bonding. It's good. You do a lot of uh, big touch screens? Um, we are doing a lot of touch screens. Um, not quite that large yet, but I, again, we're showing that we have the ability to do that. Uh, it just depends upon the customer demand. So the next three displays that we'll be looking at here is um, as our company has progressed, we had two product ranges. We had what we call our TM product range and our NL product range. Now we're standardizing um, on all of our, on our product range. It's called our P series product range, and displays in that product range will be available in three different three different. Uh, flavors, if you want to call it that. One is entry, the next is basic, and followed by advanced. So what you get as you step up in range is you get um, higher brightness, more rugged, more contrast, more backlight life, um, uh, things like that. 
Um, the other thing that we've, that we've done is we decided to standardize on wide viewing angle technology. It's, it's uh, our SFT technology, and that will be throughout the range. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leveraging off, off of our uh, production technologies is the possibility of moving into different product ranges. The first one that, that you're viewing right now is called a, a microfluidic chip. And in essence, what it allows is, um, rather than a human picking up a, a, a sample, a, a liquid sample, and moving it from location to location, you place it on the surface, and by computer control, can move that fluid sample. So basically, what it aids in is an automated way to move a fluid sample from test station to test station, so higher throughput. This is a, this is, um, a glass-based uh, uh, chip technology, chip bonding technology. Uh, so you, as you can see here, it starts with the substrate with the chip. This is actually a CMOS sensor. Um, it is separated. It's moved to a circuit board and finally to a camera module. So it's a CMOS camera module. Um, this is a phased array liquid crystal antenna. And this would be typically used for uh, reception of a commercial satellite. It's not for home use, it's not for consumer use, it's for commercial. Starlink? Purposes. Starlink would be a perfect example. Does that mean? You're using the LCD factory to make an antenna. Yes, absolutely. I mean, these are the things, you know, we're just leveraging off of, of what we already have in-house and, and looking to expand. We're now moving into the automotive space. And this is, this is 11.6 inch, it's called camera under display. So what we've done is we've integrated an infrared camera in the lower part of the display. Yeah. So, part of a very hot topic these days is driver distraction. So the idea with this particular technology display is it will auto-recognize, you see how it recognizes my face right now? Mm -hmm. Now, let's take it one step further. Let me take my cell phone out, you see how it recognizes the phone and now it's giving me a warning. Nice. Don't use your phone while driving. Sure. So it's a biofeedback for safety purposes in the automotive world. And it can be many other things. That's just, it's just for a technology demonstration. You have a big presence in the uh, automotive? Yes, actually it's, it's, a, it's a really, really hot area for us right now. We're one of the top suppliers to the automotive. All over the world? Yes. For every continent yeah. of uh, car makers. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's so many innovation happening with the electric cars. And yes. you have to supply what they want for two, three years in the future. Yes, and, and again, this whole automotive space is uh, really an exploding area for us that um, we've, we've jumped near the top. This is, a, this is a, a haptic feedback. You see here when I touch it, it gives, it gives both optical and physical feedback. Nice. Uh huh. That's just feather touch, and then this, you can vary the strength of the feedback itself. Mm -hmm. And you got the People's Choice Award. That's correct, that's correct. So the um, display that I showed earlier this is based off the same technology. So we call our invisible display. In this particular case, it's a curved display. And um, let me show you here. So the idea again is I think all of the interior designers for automobiles are looking for that, that next design element. And part of that is you know, making the, the active displays go away and making more of a cosmetic attraction. Uh, what we've added in this particular technology display is a privacy filter on the right hand side. So as I said earlier, driver distraction, I think, will be a, a key point going forward. You can turn it on and off? Yes. So, if you look from this side, as if you were a driver, I can change the privacy of just this part. You have to look at it from an off angle, this angle. All right. There you go. Now it's off. Nice. Okay. Off. On. 
Yeah. Nice. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So that that won the People's Choice of Awards. It's very nice. Very nice. It could be automatic when the car drives. Could be. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's many ways to implement it. That's just one. This is 17.3 inch. It's a uh, LTPS display, also with touch embedded. It's uh, the PCAP sensor is embedded in the TFT cell itself. Um, very high uh, contrast ratio, 1501, 10 point touch, um, high color gamut of uh, 80%. Yeah, 80. Uh, next display is uh, what we call our 15.46. Uh, it's an LTPS display, but it's T shaped. And typically the way you would do that is you would combine two different displays, one here and one here, with, a, with just a common cover glass. In this particular case, it's one display. It also has touch embedded in it and very thin frame perimeters. So we're, we're thinking in terms of freeform shapes for you know, new interior design. And you have a few years of experience doing freeform. Oh yes, we've been doing it actually for quite a few years now. Yeah, yeah, circular. Uh, many different shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, the next is a, a 15.6 inch. It's very high resolution, 4K by 2K, 3840 by 2160. Also very high contrast ratio, 1200 to 1. Uh, that could be the main display in a self-driving car or one of these could electric be. cars. Could be. I mean, it's very high resolution and they're kind of debating right now how much resolution do you need? I mean, for um, maybe passenger entertainment where you're looking at a movie or something like that, you would prefer that type of resolution. Driver doesn't necessarily need if, that high. If I can choose <coughs> an Uber with a 4K display in the back seat, uh -huh. I'll choose that option. Yes, right? of course. It would be fun to, fun it, to see. Um, this is a this is a 9.94 and it's a multi-fold uh, OLED display. And so we're, we're, we're trying to bring OLED into the automotive market. Uh, there, there have been challenges with you know, temperature, but uh, we believe we can bring OLED into the automotive market. This is 12.3 inch, it's called Accurus, which is an advanced contrast ratio. It's a dual cell display. So there are, there, are, there are two cells that are bonded together. One has color content, the other is just basically grayscale. And by, by doing that, by, by varying the, the grayscale portion of that, you can get high contrast ratio. That's really what you're trying to achieve. This is a, this is a different way of achieving something that's very high contrast ratio and, and very much the buzzword these days. It is an active matrix mini LED backplane. But this particular one is chip on glass driver. Uh, it is mini LED on glass substrate, an LTPS glass substrate. The advantage of that is, is you can reduce the driver count as opposed to the other way of doing it, which is on a circuit board, which requires more drivers, up to like 10 drivers to do that. So very dynamic display. All right. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's it. That's you awesome. The, yeah. Uh, so, the, uh, yeah. We could show this also. Yeah. We'll have to come in here. Right. Oh, quiet area. At Display Week, I've never experienced it before. Yes, it needs to be. So, what this combines is it combines not only a privacy filter, but it 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 provides um, the front surface of the display or the display itself uh, vibrates to produce sound. And it's very, very directional. So again, driver distraction. If, if uh, you would want to create a sound field that's very, very directional, so only the passenger can hear it and the driver is not distracted. Is it active now? You can? Yes. You have to stand about right here. <clears throat> All right. Listen carefully. There. All right, I hear. Yeah, I just need to position myself exactly in the right place. Yes, it's very right. directional, as I said. Nice. Uh -huh. So that's for the Uber driver who loves music and the passengers <laughs> wants quiet. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's been a great show. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you came by. And, uh, uh, Lots of people, it's back to normal, right? Um, it's like as normal as it can be, yes.
And uh, here at the front, there was this one. Uh -huh. It's all. Yeah, it's a, it's another automotive uh, demonstration. I think yeah. we can come in this way. Yeah. 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 So as many people have already experienced, uh, very wide format displays are, are becoming very common in the automotive world. This was uh, an example of an aesthetic design that appears to be all wood and it, it makes the display disappear. Nice. But if you touch it, you see now the display comes alive. All right, your mm -hmm. car is saying hello. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And you can see the information on it now. All right. Thanks a lot for oh, showing everything welcome. at your booth. Yeah. Glad you came by. Check out the WISE. WISE is such a smart system. I think I'm saving over a thousand euros every year because I use it everywhere when I pay for stuff. You know, you want to pay for stuff in the world. So you can check out my longer video for where I explain some more why I think this is amazing. And it's free. You can just sign up with my link down here and you can use it on your Android Pay, your Apple Pay. It's like a prepaid Visa debit card, right? So you need to put a little bit of money on it and you can just put money on it from your local bank account. And there's zero fees. The fees are so tiny. It's like five to 10 times cheaper than your bank. Don't use PayPal anymore. Don't use Western Union when you send money to a whole bunch of countries around the world. Just use Wise. It's way faster and it's five to 10 times cheaper. So really check it out. It's cool. And I appreciate if you use my link below. Thanks for watching.